which I actually think has, shows a, a good example of the type of power that you can get for O2 once you actually do the, um, what's it called, uh, you, you start to play with the integration between the black box and the white box. So what, the, what this is, is, this is one of the, those O2 modules that, um, uh, t -t 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 that basically, here we go, uh, pet clinic. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to drag the, the class files into here. Can you guys see that? So I just drag and drop that there, right? I'm going to convert it. And, uh, and basically, what you guys are going to see here on the left are all the controllers for this particular source code. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm actually creating, in some ways, an object model of all, basically, the attack surface, right? And, and I don't know if you guys have anything with Spring MVC, but this is really hard to get unless you can visualize it. So if you grab each one of these guys, you actually see that um, basically, so at pet form is going to be, there you go. So you can actually see that I can actually point you straight away, right, to the location in the source code where that happens. And even more importantly, if you guys, I don't know if you guys have any Spring MVC, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, bindable stuff. But the Spring MVC has, um, there's a big issue with, with you know, what's it called, uh, auto-binding things. Uh, where is it? And basically the problem is, let me find it for you. Here we go. All right. So, and, and, and actually I have, a, I have a really cool demo where I can actually use that thing on the left to drive my black box analysis. But this is what I want to show you, right? If you go to the edit page of this particular website, you have five fields on that page. Right? You, you, in that page, what you actually have is basically when you edit the, the pet, what you can edit or the fields you have is the name, is the, uh, is the, the birth, and, and the type. That's the fields you have. The problem with, in this case with Spring MVC is that because of the way Spring MVC is designed and the auto binding is designed, every single one of these guys in red is actually a field that you can edit. So now you can start to see every single one of those is a field that I can actually edit from a black box point of view. So that actually means that although this particular field doesn't exist in the web page, I can actually go owner, you know, dot pets, dot visit, something. So I can actually, in this particular case, move one of my pets, on this example on the pet clinic, to another user because I might actually be editing my own details, but my own details are basically mapped to the other object. So this is one of those examples where what you actually have here is, in some ways, I can actually use the, the, the static analysis of a bit of code to actually drive my black box analysis. And I can actually use, basically merge those two worlds because I'm, I basically can, can use what I've learned from one side into the other. So one of the examples I have is I've grabbed, for example, ASP.NET MVC. I don't know if you guys play with ASP.NET MVC, but one of the things I've done was I figured out the formula for the MVC controllers. So in one click, I can actually give you every single URL that is available from the outside world. And that's really powerful because what actually that allows you to do, it really allows you to um, what's it called, to, to gain a much bigger understanding and a, a much bigger testing of what's, what's happening. So the last thing I want to show you is basically this, right? And actually, I don't have the thing running, but um, we, in, and this is the demos I have, so, but uh, you actually should be able to see, see the thing in action, right? Because the, the, the big that I want to show you is actually the, the one on the right. So let's just, let me grab this, some vulnerabilities. So, I actually don't have Happy Bank running, so there's, there's a half of this is not going to work, but you guys already seen it. So what this demo would do is on there on the left, you would actually would see the actual exploit, and it's actually asking where it is, right? I don't have it running, so don't worry about that. But, uh, but after that runs, what you guys are going to see here on the right is actually the execution of the code throughout the multiple layers. So what this demo, what this will give you is say, in one swoop, you have the black box animation, which you guys already see on the other videos, right? And then you have the source code animation. And this is reality. Now, what's really interesting about this animation is, and in here, is basically like if you actually look at this trace, how many guys here have done static analysis? Have actually looked at traces on static analysis? Okay? So, this trace here, right, if you guys spend a bit, a bit of time looking at this trace, has basically a couple of things that you probably have never seen before, right? The first thing it has, if you look at the top, it starts with the URL, right? So actually, that trace is actually the URL from the outside world, right? And the one below is the method, right, that actually you hit when you hit that URL. 
Now, for some cases, you can actually do that automatically because the formula is easy. Spring MVC, ASP on the MVC, you know, ASPX pages, you can get it automatically. In, in Hatme Bank case, as in a lot of real world apps, there's a little bit of logic there, which is not very complicated, but there's a bit of logic that literally prevents you from doing that automatically. Because in this case, there's a form parameter that actually controls the name of the page of the controller who actually is going to be mapped the name of the method. So un until you can write that little script, you will never be able to do this automatically. And my view is that the, the challenge here is not to do that automatically. The challenge here is to do that really fast. So if I can do that mappings in the middle of the engagement, if I can write those mappings in half an hour, an hour, two hours, that's fine. That's cool. That's not a problem. Because I just were able to connect my black box mappings with my source code analysis. So one of the conversations I want to have with you guys is, let's find a way that if I give you these URLs, right, or you give me URLs, I can slap on the source code, right? And we can have a dance, because you can tell me, hey, this is what I found, and I go, oh, this is what I can resolve. But by the way, I also found all this stuff, and you can go and crawl it and go, hey, this is what else what I found. Now, there's, other, there's, there's one more thing here that you probably haven't seen. What you haven't seen here is that if you look at this trace, it starts on a web layer, and then this guy here, right, is actually a web service. So what it actually means, it means that if you would look at this from a point of view of trace, just about every single scanner, I actually think all scanners out there, will be able to find out a mapping from the text box because they know that the text box is dangerous, and they will, they will, they will, they will stop it at the web service invocation. The problem is that they will not go and jump from this bit here to that bit there. And the difference is that the first one was the web method call and the web layer. The second one is the web services entry point. And the problem with the web services, a lot of times it looks empty because nobody calls, but it's a web service. And at the end, I end up on the SQL injection. So the power that I have here is I have what I call a real trace. I have a trace that starts on the outside world, in fact, starts with a workflow. Because remember that there's, there's four steps to get even to that page. Because that's a page inside. So you have to log in, you have to go there, click here, go there, and then hit the post message. So it starts there, it hits a web service, there's almost like an air gap there, continues on a web service, ends up on the, um, what's it called, on the SQL injection. So, so basically, this is what I call a real trace. And one of the things that I've done in .NET, at least, and for the static analysis, I can actually give you one file that has every single one of those methods sequentially. Which is probably, the, if you guys do any kind of static analysis or code review, you really need to check that out. Because it's one file that has every single bit of method that is relevant for that particular call which makes a massive difference in which way I do my static analysis. So this trace was created with O2, right? And in fact, I was doing this. If you guys use Ounce Labs or whatever, no, it's called AppScan Source Edition, in some ways O2 has gazillions of features for it because O2 in some ways came from, from that and then I evolved. But this is already an O2 generated trace. So O2 already has a static analysis engine built in. And if you guys are into Java or PHP or Python, I need to talk to you because I want to make sure that um, you know, we, we replicate this. So to just to wrap it up, one of the things that um, I'm also trying to do is to build a commercial ecosystem around O2 and around other projects. So I have two things which I don't have time to talk about, but I want, if you guys are interested in O2 and use it commercial, com either commercially or embrace it, I've actually set up a subscription model for O2. So basically you can get a customized version of O2, you can get dedicated support, you can get all sorts of, of, of specialized focus. And I'm also set up in a bunch of what I call pledges, which is I'm saying, here's a bunch of $20,000 bucket. If enough people care about this problem and they put $2,000 or $5,000 in there, I can get the development resources on top of it. So what I really want to do is make O2 a really professional, slick run operation. And I really want to make sure that, in fact, we create a model that we can replicate on other OWASP projects because we really need you know, to have these glues and these kind of workflows kind of throughout the industry. So thank you very much for your time. And you know, I'm actually kind of almost on the OWASP booth, so if you want to continue the conversation there, and I can give you a bunch of demos. And there's, you know, literally, I solved just about every problem that I had. So you will be overwhelmed when you look at O2 because there is a lot to it. But you know, I think it's really worthwhile spending the time around. Thank you, and I think if you have any questions, you know, we can start, you know, maybe kind of continue here because I think I've already run past my time, right? All right. Thank you.